I got guts. I'm making pizza for an Italian guy, which is uh, saying a lot considering I'm half Japanese and half Welsh. Courage is the name of that game. Twelve years ago, I was changing my oil in the slush, lying on my back, under my car in suburban Washington, D.C., in Oakton, Virginia. And that was when I said, all right, that's enough, that's it. So I picked up everything I had and moved out here to Prescott, Arizona, where at 6,000 feet we get all four seasons, but every one of them is pretty darn nice. And while we might hit 100 degrees, in the summertime, it's always going to be way too hot in Phoenix, so I'm glad I'm here. First in Monroe is a personal journey that began a couple of years ago and the, the idea of this record is to produce something like the old GRP days, kind of a throwback to an earlier time of contemporary jazz, uh, where you could use a backbeat and feel like you were experimenting a little bit. Kind of a warm, organic kind of style. We put together real people in a real room all together. Nobody phoned in their parts. Came out pretty darn well. On this record, I've got some really, really good people. We got uh, Joey D. Francesco on organ. We have Eric Marienthal uh, on on reeds. Dominic Farinacci came in from New York and did some horn work for us. We had Lenny Castro play uh, percussion for us. We had David Garfield on keys. Some of Phoenix's best people uh, came and did supporting roles. I really owe this record to Mike Florio, who put all these people together uh, on the team for me. And the first thing he did was he called Clark Rigsby of Tempest Recording Studios and Todd Chuba. These two have been working together for 20 years now and they've produced a lot together. Uh, uh, Jimmy Smith, Steve Gadd, Tower of Power. A lot of the greats have been through this very room, the one we're sitting in here right now. And it's an honor to be here. Good enough. pizza tonight. Welcome to the lab. Uh, this is where I spend a lot of my time. I'll uh, come in here and work on lessons. I'll come in here and practice along with the tracks to try to improve my solos. I'll take the lessons that I get from Bill Moyo and John Shacklett and try to incorporate them here. The guitar rack there incorporates 
a synthesizer, so if I need to sound like uh, an organ, I can dial up an organ or a Wurlitzer piano and play that in. It gives me a good sound here in this little room. To your health. So, Ken. Yeah, I'm going to click his lens. Here's Ken's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. In this space, which is a pretty calming influence, I get a lot of chance to reflect and a certain amount of solitude in which to write. And if I can't sleep and I've got an idea, well, I may as well go write it uh, before it disappears. A very famous jazz musician once wrote that melodies come from God, and that may be so. But once they show up, it's difficult to preserve them. You have to work on it right now, keep it somehow. So one of the techniques I learned from Bela Fleck, a friend of mine, is that he will call his answering machine at home and hum or whistle the melody into the machine, thereby preserving it. And I thought that was a great idea. So thanks, Bela. Well, the songs on this album uh, come from a pretty wide palette of colors. Uh, well, there's some Latin, there's some funk, uh, kind of touch on fusion. Uh, there's one or two pieces that are kind of Latin-y in flavor. Uh, and it, it draws together all the things that I've been listening to for the last two or three years, kind of into this mix. It's been a lot of fun writing this material. And of course, Todd and Clark had a lot to do with going through and making intelligent revisions of some of my wilder ideas. In other words, they unearthed the melodies that were hiding inside the charts that I brought them the first time. It's, they've really done a lot for it. Mm -hmm. 